All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. My name is Hannah Combs reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. We are here with uh, incumbent County Commissioner Jack Wilson, who is also the Republican candidate for District 1 in this election. Jack, thanks for coming. Thank you for asking me. Um, we're going to give you two minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to continue serving in this position. Two minutes is plenty. There's very little to tell. Um, I'm a businessman for the last 30 years. Um, I had ran for commissioner in the previous election, lost, later got appointed. I've spent uh, three and a half years on the job roughly. Um, and in that time, I have to say, uh, it is a learning experience every day. Um, I enjoy it thoroughly, which is the reason I'm rerunning. Mm -hmm. I, I love the uh, interaction with the citizens and being able to solve problems where we can. Um, it's one of the things that I think is gets lost in the shuffle with what a commissioner really does, and that's to be uh, available to the people to uh, handle the issues as they arise and not kick the can down the road, so to speak. And I, I know in the past some of our commissions have laid some stuff on the table that this commission took care of, Southern Canal and Sewer, among other things, um, to move the county forward. And uh, I think another four years, most of the goals that I set out to do four years ago, I will have accomplished and I'll feel good about it. You're talking about those goals. What are some of the issues that you see facing the county in the, in the next four years? Well, we, we really have a couple things. Um, looking at Maryland right now uh, as being an open for business state. You know, that's one of the things that our governor touts. And uh, as, as a commissioner, you know, we embrace that. Um, and, and we'd like to see some commercial uh, development here in the county that will help to offset some of the commercial tax base, which will in turn give us the opportunity to uh, take a look at the um, taxes on our uh, citizens as a whole and still be able to provide the services. Um, two of the things that we're really lacking there that I think um, need to be worked on and continue to work on, we're already working on them, um, one of them being broadband. Um, anybody that lives in North County, which is where I'm from, will tell you horror stories about the internet and, and accessibility to reliable broadband. Um, we're moving the needle on that. We, uh, we have a broadband advisory commission. They are uh, hit the ground running. Um, slow at first, but they are uh, going above and beyond the call of duty. They're meeting once a week if necessary to get vendors in here to give us some new ideas. The other thing is um, workforce development. If we were to get this economic development, we've got to have the workforce to support it. And right now, I don't feel like, um, coming from a blue collar background, I don't know that we offer the opportunities to our high school kids um, for alternative career paths other than college. So I think it's important. And again, we're moving the needle on that. We've been, it's a work in progress. We've been through two, three uh, uh, superintendents of the schools. We're on our second uh, vice president or president over at the college. And it takes all those pieces to come together along with the county to, uh, to try and move that forward. And we've we got a lot of buy-in from the business. So um, I look forward to keep working on it. And I think uh, next year we're going to see some great strides on it. Okay. We're going to move on to some one-minute questions. Okay and let you tackle those. Um, the county's comprehensive plan is coming mm -hmm. up for review. Uh, what are some of your thoughts as far as that plan? You know, I, I uh, commend the people that put together the 2010 comp plan because I think all in all, if you look at the plan and where we've come since 2010, um, I think it did what it was supposed to do. It, it was to keep the county a rural um, county that people, you know, basically when they got off work, they were going home. and. I think that comp plan did a good job of outlining how to, to maintain that. And you know, there's a lot of criticism because uh, there's, there's obviously building going on on Kent Island now. And a lot of people, because they see it, they attribute it to the sitting commissioners. But um, fortunately for us, the truth be told that the development was already in the works long before this commission and uh, actually was, went through the comp plan and passed muster in the comp plan. So none of these things are new. Um, and, and I feel like the, the biggest area we may need to look at, we have sea level rise is one of the things that's coming up, and North County. So I, I think North County is something we need to look at with the 301 bypass, um, maybe how we're uh, thinking about growing the towns up there to help them economically and maybe utilize that 301 corridor more. Mm -hmm. With the rising senior citizen population mm -hmm. in the county, what are some provisions that you see being made for those? Oh, without a doubt, transportation for the seniors. Um, it's, I think it's one of the things that we really have to be wary of. Um, our, our county ride does a fantastic job of getting people around. We've uh, actually gone in some different directions with it, where instead of using the larger buses, we're using some smaller 
uh, Transit Connect style vans and that kind of thing to get our seniors around for onesie twosie type appointments and that kind of thing because it's, it's expensive to run those big buses around with only two people on them. Mm -hmm. So we've made some great strides in there but I think what we have to monitor is the growing senior population and how much are we going to need in the future and prepare for it so that we can provide that uh, transportation service that they're going to need for both medical um, activities, whatever the case may be. Um, another thing is the fact that uh, our seniors used to take bus trips and for some reason those got uh, uh, nixed and I'd like to see that kind of stuff come back to some more activities because we do have an active senior community here in the county. So, Another big question is the, the county commissioners have been approached for funding above maintenance of effort mm -hmm. uh, by the school system. What is, what is a good approach to that request? <laughs> this is a tough one minute answer right here. Um, through three budget cycles now, um, I've, I've said pretty much the same thing. I've never really changed my opinion on it. Um, one of the problems is, is the, the, the formula that's used to um, derive what the maintenance of effort is for the counties is kind of a flawed formula because it takes a look at the entire state and it takes a look at what other counties do in, in terms of funding. And then because we are a wealthier county, we are somewhat penalized to a certain extent and, and sometimes to a considerable amount of money that basically we, we're subsidizing other school systems and we're not getting the money back from the state. We presently fund 57% of the Board of Ed's budget, of their total budget. Um, you know, my, and I've said it time and again, if, if the state could get us to where we're at 57 and they could get us close to 50, most of that funding issues would go away. But I also think it's going to take transparency on both the, you know, the Board of Ed and the, and the administration to sit down with the commissioners and let's really budget. Let's not just say here's a blank check and go spend it and then come back in when you need more. I, I think we really have to budget much as we do as commissioners. Yeah. How would you balance future development and protecting the environment? You know we had that question last night at a forum and uh, and pretty much when you, when, you, when, you, when you look at the environment here in Queen Anne's County, that is Queen Anne's County. Um, our shorelines, our, uh, our, our tributaries, our, you know, the, the farms, the landscape, what everybody comes here for. And I think what you have to do is you have to look at the areas that can be most affected um, in, in terms of if we have sea level rise, if there's extensive sea level rise. Um, if we have hurricanes, things like that, we've got to be conscious of the fact that where we develop, we have to make sure that it doesn't create an unintended consequence down the road to where you know we build beautiful homes that we're tearing down 10 years from now. Um, and I think looking at, at, at the way some of the, the, the uh, building codes have changed here, I think some of that's been taken into account, but I think it's going to have, there's going to be a long hard look at it in the comp plan to make sure going down the next 10 years, because that's what we're setting up for is the next 10 years, is to concentrate on making sure that the development and the environment work together. What are some of your thoughts on fostering business growth and economic development here in the county? I stated in my opening, I think it's uh, the broadband. It's, it really is. It's, uh, right now, um, again, one of the problems we have here and, and the reason you see Kent Island getting the development it gets is because it has the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, and broadband is, every business needs this nowadays. It's, it's not a utility, it's, it's a necessity. Everybody operates on it. You guys got it in here and, and you know, everybody's got a cell phone and everybody goes home and gets on their computer or Facebook or whatever they do. So it, that's going to be the biggest thing because if, the, if that infrastructure is not in place, it's going to be very hard to foster business growth outside of the areas where it exists, which like I said right now is Kent, you know, Kent Island, Chester area, Stevensville. They have it, but up in North County, we're, we have a lot of unserved and underserved areas that if we were to get them service in, in the towns, um, I think the towns could see some economic growth that wouldn't impact the island so much and, and maybe even ease some of the traffic on the island. Mm -hmm. Coming from the northern part of the county, you know that residents there sometimes struggle. They don't feel like they're getting the same level of service as the rest of the county does. How do you see addressing those concerns? Well, I listen to everybody that calls me from North County, um, any issues they have, uh, and, and I address those individually as they come. In, in a broader sense, um, the, the biggest thing I, that I've done and, and I continue to do is you support the ag community because the northern county is the ag community. And, we, and yeah, we have some other businesses in there, support business, things like that, and certainly support that. But, you know, north county is an agricultural community. Um, and, and I know some people say they don't get the services, but north county has almost three times the mileage of roads as the rest of the county combined. So a lot, a lot of money goes into the roads and you don't necessarily see that until they come and tar and ship your road. Um, but in terms of, you know, working with the towns in North County, because they're crying for uh, 
economic development. They, they want to have jobs for their, uh, the people that live there, and they want to see some residential growth within the town. So I think, for me, that's the, the biggest thing I'm going to strive for, and, and I feel like, you know, throughout this whole um, campaign process, I think a lot of people see that need now. So I, I, all I can tell North County is hang on, your voices are going to be heard. We've covered a, a lot of topics kind of here, and uh, are there any issues that we didn't discuss maybe that are a priority for you still? You know, I, I'm going to stick to the two that, that just from day one I've always been passionate about, and that's the, the workforce development and, and the broadband, because I think those two things combined give the county a much brighter future. It, it, it allows us to set up so that our kids may move away and go to college, but they'll have opportunities to come back to if, if we build it right. And, you know, outside of that, I tell you, this county runs good. We've uh, been able to hold the line on taxes. We haven't raised taxes. We haven't needed to. We've cut spending where we had to to keep the budget balanced. We've funded education at maintenance of effort and above for two years. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all about, uh, for, for me, it's all about keeping a, a happy balance in the county because I think if we can maintain that for the next four years, our reserves are where they need to be. I think we're pretty much recession-proof as a county. Um, it, it's going to be a bright four years. All right. Thanks, Jack. Thank Thanks you. for coming and participating Absolutely. with us Thank today. Absolutely. Thank you.